Hi everybody, it's Joan Young here. Welcome back for another painting tutorial in acrylics. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint a hydrangea landscape. And I'm going to be working on a 16 by 20 gray primed canvas. I just painted it with slate gray. And you can also paint this on a white canvas as well. And I've got the following colors I'll be using in this painting today and brushes. Be sure to look below this video. Just click down below in the description box to see the full list of colors and brushes uh, for this video today. So I've got titanium white, primary yellow, naphthol crimson, light blue violet, light olive green, hooker's green hue permanent, and dioxazine purple. So they're all here on my palette. I've also got a jumbo 50 filbert brush, a one inch mop brush, and a 14 filbert brush. So I'm gonna be um, completing this entire painting with these three brushes only and these colors. Feel free to change up your brushes and colors if you like. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is take my large filbert brush I'm going to get it a little bit wet and I'm just going to add a bit of water to the canvas here before I add the paint. Doing this is really going to help me blend and spread my acrylics out. Okay, so the first color I'm going to take, let me just spread that around a little bit better, make sure there's no drips. And the first color I'm going to take is white. I'm going to take yellow and red and start mixing it by sort of crisscrossing or creating these little figure eights and then just continue to do that. Sometimes picking up a little bit more red and sometimes adding a little bit more yellow or white, just so that you get different variations all around the sky, just making it a little bit more interesting. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of white and a little bit of light blue violet now, and I'm gonna start adding this into parts of the sky. So I'll add a little bit up here. We can go ahead and add this wherever you want. It's nice to have a little bit of warm colors and a little bit of cool blue patches here and there for clouds or just lighter areas of the sky or sky blue and you might even create a little bit of purple when the colors mix or a little bit of light green like we have there so there are def definitely wonderful advantages to adding wet paint directly onto wet paint you can create so many more shades And values this way. Okay so I'm going to continue going down here but I'm going to add a little bit more white now to the center. Okay so as I'm doing this I'm adding more and more white and then I'm just going to take a little bit of water to help release the remainder of the paint out of my brush and I'm just going to pull this way and that way okay and then right into my yellow with white and a little bit of water And I'm going to start blending it in to the white and the gray canvas. Now I need a little bit of water on here to help release that paint. See how much it helps? The trick is to not use too much water, otherwise 
the paint won't stay on there. Pick up a little bit of white here and there too if you end up adding too much yellow. Kind of just want to create like a buttery yellow. And then you can just even bring it up a little bit at the sides here. Just a slight little scoop like that. Okay, the next color I'm going to take, I haven't washed my brush off. I'm going to take just a little bit of water again. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my light olive green. And I'm going to start adding this a little lower. And a little bit more chunky and streaky like. Then into dark green. And this time I'm going to kind of pull in different directions and also push on the end of my brush this or the side of the brush like this. greens and bring it up a little higher here we want it to feel like we're low down kind of in the grass or the flowers that kind of perspective and kind of peering through and, and looking Now I'm going to take purple and green and I'm going to kind of push flat like that, wiggle to create some chunky areas that could be leaves. And I am switching over to my right hand now. I'm, I mostly use my left hand, but um, sometimes for filming purposes or just because my right arm or wrist is getting a little tired, I'll switch over. So I kind of just alternate if you're wondering. Okay, so we've got a little bit of each and then I'm just gonna make it kind of blurry like this and soften over. Take a little bit of water. I have so much paint in my brush still. And add a few little stems. Let's go ahead and dry this layer of paint off and then we'll start coming in with our flowers. Okay, so just before we come in with our flowers, I'm going to take my 14 filbert brush, a little bit of water and some white, and I'm going to add some more light back here. Brighten this up a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to add more white and I'm going to start to, instead of going like this that we have done already, I'm going to start to create these little scoops. and just really loosely add a little bit of water to 
thin the paint out. Scatter little wiggles. Really loosen up your brush stroke. blend or dry brush. You can use a little bit of water in your brush for this or none at all and just dry brush that around to create some softer peaks in the clouds. And then this area here where it's the darkest on the sky, I'm going to apply the most amount of white next to it, not to cover all of it up, but just so that we could create a little bit more contrast, giving us a more sense of bright light. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of yellow, mix that with my white. And add a little bit of warmth. And then brush back and forth diagonally just to create kind of like a rays of golden sunlight here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is come in with um, the basic big round puppy shapes for our hydrangeas and we're just going to do this really loosely. We're going to keep this really, really simple. I've got my one inch mop brush. It's dry, no water. For this step, you just want to go straight into um, the paint. So I'm going to take a bit of red and purple. And I'm going to start one right here. So to give us the sense that we're down kind of lower, we're going to make the flowers, some of them come up higher. And hydrangeas are really, really big, right? They're just a big, huge mass of a bunch of other small little flowers. Okay, so I think having the red in with the purple will give us some really nice warm um, shades. We're going to create multiple shades of like lavender and purples in here. I know from my experience with growing hydrangeas, um, in my garden it depends on like what this what's in the soil how acidic it is stuff like that that can determine what color your hydrangeas are going to be um, so i've got some that are pink some that are light blue some that when i bought them were supposed to be um purple and they're actually turning pink. So you kind of just never know what colors yours are going to be until you plant them and see because it really does depend on what's what type of soil you have. But I love all those colors, the little bits of wine, purpley, pinky tones that come out. So I want to think about my hydrangeas when I'm painting them and I'm going to add one up here too this one kind of more so in the distance I'm just going to add a little 
blurry blob of one kind of down here. And because the canvas is big, I think I'll have another one here as well. I'm going to layer over. Okay, done with that brush now. And we're going to finish these hydrangeas uh, with the filbert brush. So I'm going to be taking white light blue violet just take white with red purple blue violet and all we're going to do is just push and tap we're making this impressionistic so we're not out to paint realistic uh, looking hydrangeas it's how it's going to look from far away It all just comes together, but I love using um, this technique for lilacs and hydrangeas, any like flowers that have lots of other little flowers. This brush is excellent for creating um, flowers as well. It's already got kind of a petal shape to it, right? How it's like round on the end. And then all you want to do is just add some lighter petals. But I'll come in and do that after. I'm going to continue going around here. Now every time I apply a push and tap like this, I'm changing the direction of my brush. That way you'll make it look more like the petals are like a hydrangea, how all the little flowers are in different directions. And remember that acrylic, well, if you're just tuning in now and, you've, and you haven't painted with acrylic before, it does dry a little darker than what it looks like wet. So don't be surprised if later on you come back and you have to add some more highlights it's just how it goes and i'm going to take a little bit of purple and blue so that this side of the hydrangea is a little bit more in shadow okay and then we'll Got this one here down here. So a lot of times people that are just starting to paint think that they are not ready to paint flowers. Um, and they, have, they think they have to really paint them realistically. But you don't have to paint something in full detail. And you don't have to take hours and hours to create a nice painting. You just need to learn a few little painting hacks like this, have the right brush. And you know, it also helps to be loose and free and happy when you're painting. And I think painting, if I'm, if I'm sad and I go to paint, I end up being happier. It makes me feel better. So. Sometimes we paint to be happier and sometimes um, we're happier when we paint. Okay, now I'm going to make this part a little bit lighter because this one's in front. So I'm going to add a little bit extra white and blue. And again, notice how I'm pushing and tapping, turning in different directions. Okay, 
let's take a little bit more white and really bring this hydrangea in front So that's a good tip for you guys if you're wanting to figure out how do I layer over um, flowers. One has to be lighter or darker than the other. Especially in this area. So this being in front of this one would cause a shadow right here. So this is going to be darker. This part's going to be lighter. But we can go back and add some lighter areas, petals up here along the top of that one. And one here. This one here, just a few little bits of light. Okay, and then I'm going to take some more blue and purple. Make sure you're not completely covering up all the dark purple red base. I'm going to take a little bit, speaking of red, I'm going to take a little bit more red and purple in with my blue. Make sure I've got going on my brush. See all the different colors and shades we've got going on here. Warm and cool temperatures. This is what gives your paintings life, creating light and shadow and temperatures. But if you've never painted hydrangeas before and you thought you couldn't, I really hoping this changes your mind. It's this easy. All I'm doing is loading my brush and pushing and tapping. All of these techniques today, these brush strokes, are very, very beginner friendly. I'm going to add a little bit of white here to these ones towards the top. And then because I know it's going to dry a little bit darker, I'm going to add more white. a little bit more blue and white to this one here. You see how easy it is to paint hydrangeas. I've got tutorials out for Lilacs, roses, fuchsias, irises, all showing you really, really easy ways to paint them. And I've also got tutorials for ones that look a little more in detail and close up. I'm going to add a little bit of light blue violet, sap green, or hooker's green hue. Now some of the hydrangeas have 
these little bits of green on them if you've ever noticed that some of them do so i just want to include a little bit of hint of that here and there and i want to add a little bit more depth with purple and green I don't want to paint any leaves in detail. I just want to have darker patches here. So we just build up a little bit more um, contrast and shadow. Take a little bit. I'm just going to use the end of my brush here and I'm going to dab it into the purple and I'm just going to go around and add a few little dots and dabs. Again, not out to paint super realistic in detail flowers, but hydrangeas will have all those other little flowers and I just want to have a little hint of the center of some of those flowers so again just super easy just use the end of your brush dot and dab Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and join Patreon for exclusive tutorials. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!